Good morning, students. I believe you are set for today's class. My name is Ile Somitokbe. I'll be taking you through mathematics. And our topic before us is simple equations. In our last class, we dealt with factorization of algebraic expressions. And I believe all assignment has been done. And I believe you are set for this class with your writing materials your jota and your textbook don't be distracted be focused and let's learn together in the course of this lesson now before we proceed we want to look at solution to the exercises that was given in the last class the last class i gave out some exercises so we'll be doing the solution and that will be the first thing that we're going to do in this class. Now, the first question says, find the HCF of the following, 4X and the 6Y. We want to find the HCF of 4X and 6Y. I taught you in the last class that you were going to you write out the factors of 4X and the factors of what? 2Y. I will not be listing that out for you. You know that the factors of 4x are 1, 2, 4, x, 2x, and the 4x. Then the factors of 6y are 1, 2, 3, 6, y, 2y, 3y, and the 6y. Now, if you look at this, the highest common factor, which is the HCF of 4x and 6y, is nothing but what? But 2. Because 2 will divide... Oh, 4x to also divide 2y and there's nothing else you can see so the acf of 4x and 6y is nothing but what 2. now the next one if you are looking for the acf of 3m and 2mn 3m and 2mn now let me tell you what you'll be looking for is the factors of 3m and the factors of 2mn and there's nothing that we have that can divide 3m and 2mn if not m m will divide all and there's no other factor that we can look for now the hcf of pnx and kxy pns and kxy it's nothing but what x that is the hcf x can go in pns x can go in kxy so now, the next one is we are to copy and complete the following algebraic expressions. We are to copy and complete the following algebraic expressions. What is the meaning of that? That is, we want to factorize. We've already given out 2x as the highest common factors. So, what will be the remaining uh, terms inside the bracket? That is what we are asked to complete. Out of 4x, you take away 2x. You are, you'll be left with what? 2. Then out of 2xy, you take away 2x, you'll be left with what? Y. That's all. Then the next one. Out of 7rs minus xt, you've taken out s. What will be left here? 7 will be left r follow minus t. That's all. Then this. You have pqr minus 2qr. You've taken out qr. What will be left in the bracket? This will be P minus 2. That is what will be left. Okay? Now, I think you understand what we've done. What I've done, rather. Okay? In the next one, we want to look for the uh, monomial denominator. In our last class, I discussed about monomial denominator. If you remember very well. I said this is a, an algebraic expression of which the denominator it's a fraction yes it's a fraction of which the denominator is just a single term the denominator is just a single term so i'll pick which one is a monomial and the rest will be not monomial so p over xy is a monomial okay p over xy is a monomial this one is a monomial why rx over t plus 1 is not a monomial because the denominator is t plus 1 and t plus 1 is more than a single term 
Now, 2x plus y over 5 is a monomial. Then p over x minus y is not a monomial. Then r x plus 1 over pq is a monomial. So you can have xy, xyz as the denominator is still a single term. But once you are having xy plus something, it's not a single term. You, like you can have p square r square in the denominator is still a monomial fraction. So, I believe you understand what I've done and it's very clear enough. Now, the last question before us is to simplify these algebraic uh, fractions. x over 3 plus y over 2, then, and so on like that. Okay, let's start with the first question. Question 1 x over 3 plus y over 2. Now, the first thing you look for is the LCM. The LCM of 3 and 2 is 6. This will be 2x plus 3y. Because 2 in 6 is 3 multiplied by y, that will be 3y. So that is for the first one. Then, I will ask this question before I proceed. Is this a monomial denominator or not? Is this a monomial denominator or not? Answer that question yourself. Now, the next question is 3p 3 This is 3p 3p minus q over 2r then minus p over r q. What is the uh, the SM is 2RQ, right? So, 2RQ in 2R, you'll be left with 1Q. Let me use upper part here. Let me use this upper part. Okay? I will solve it here. Okay? So, find the SM, which is 2RQ. Okay? This will be Q. Right? Q multiplied by 3P. That will be 3PQ minus Q square. Then this will be what? 2P. That will be minus 2P. And this is your answer. For those that don't understand the way I got that, now, this is how I got... Uh, the SM is 2RQ, right? 2RQ is the SM of this, right? Then, this one is 2R, and this is 2RQ. You are left with what? Q. The Q we multiply every time here. That will be 3PQ minus Q squared. Then, minus... This one is not having 2. Just put it down, minus 2P. That's all. Just simple. Now, the next question is... Uh, 5Y... 5Y plus X over 3 plus y plus 2x over 7. So what will be the SM of this? This is 21. So I'll just do it direct. 21 here, 3. Oh, 21, that will be 7. So 7 multiplied by what is here? That will be 35y plus 7x. Then plus, are you seeing it? This one will be 3y plus 6x. Yes or no? Someone will be asking me, where do I get 3? How many in 27? And how many seven can you get in 21? That is 3. So, the 3 will multiply everything here. So that is how I got that. Now, you, you can collect like terms. Y, Y, X, X. This is 38Y plus 13X over 21. And that is the final answer. Now, let's move to what we have for today. We are going to go to the... Uh, we revise ourselves on factorization of algebraic expressions again. Then we expand what problems leading to simple algebraic fractions. We solve problems involving the expansion of algebraic expressions. Then we solve simple equations problems. Now, let's start with factorization. I will not dwell much on this. What you just note, to factorize any algebraic expressions, 
you must first look for the ACF, that is the highest common factors. So that is what we are going to look for. Now, examples on that. We want to factorize 4x squared minus x. We have 4x squared minus x. Now, what is common? x is common. Because x can go in 4x squared, x can also go in x. That will be 4x minus what? 1. That's all. The next one is 3x squared y. 3x squared y plus 5x squared. What's common? x squared. Bring out the x squared. Then what is left? 3y plus what? Plus 5. That's all. Now, again, we want to factorize x into y plus 1, y into 1 plus y. So, y plus 1 is the same thing as y plus 1. They are the same. They are the same. They are the same. They are similar. Just like we have been 2 multiplied by 3 and 3 multiplied by 2. So, they are the same. So, y plus 1, y plus 1 is common. So, you can bring it out. So, this will be y plus 1. Then, what are you left? What is left there? x plus what? y. That's all. Okay? I believe you understand what I did. It's just the use of highest common factors. What is common? X, y plus 1 is common. Y plus 1 is common. I just bring it out. That is what we call factorization. Using the method of highest common factors or factor. Same thing. Now, we are moving on to world problems on algebraic expressions. World problems on algebraic expressions. That is, what problems can be interpreted to simple algebraic expressions? Hmm, is it true? Yes. For example, if you say a number is added to 10 and the result is 20, what is the number? A number is added to 10 and the result is 20, what is the number? This is, the, uh, this is where the concept of world problems comes in. That is, when you are looking for the unknown, you don't know the unknown. Okay? So, it can happen also under algebraic expressions. And what really makes this interesting is that what problems you make use of the unknown. Then, algebraic expressions is the use of unknowns, use of letters. Okay, let the number be this. You don't know. Let it be x. Then, x plus y is what? So, from the statement of the problem, you can interpret it to be a simple algebraic expressions. Let's look at some examples on this. Now, find the area of a rectangle whose sides are x plus y units, x minus y units. Now, we know that a rectangle has its length, which is x plus y, that is the longest side, then x minus y is breadth, its breadth. So that means the area of a rectangle, which is length times breadth, will be your length, x plus y, then your breadth, y minus, x minus y rather. So, I've taught you expansion. x multiplied by x will give us what? x squared. Then x by this, this will give us minus x y, then plus y x minus y squared. So, this will give us zero, and you have x squared minus y squared, all square units. Okay, you understand? That's what you are going to have as the area. Now, the next one is the average cost of Stan Mass book is 800 US dollars. If eBay purchased some books for 4,000 US dollars, how many books did he purchase? The cost of one book, the cost of one book, this one is for one book, is 800 US dollars. Now, we don't know the cost of X book for 4,000 US dollars. Are you getting me now? So what you just do, cross multiply and divide. That means the cost of X book will be 4,000 US dollars divided by the cost of one book, which is 800. So this will give you this will be 5. That means 
five books. So you are going to get five books for four thousand US dollars. You are going to get five books for four thousand US dollars. The next one is a company has a piece of farmland, five five hundred meters by thirty meters. The company used an area of X meter square. Calculate the area not used. Now, you will agree with me that this farmland, the shape of this farmland is nothing but what? A rectangle. And a rectangle has length. This is the breadth, 30. And this is the length, 500 meters. Okay? Are you following? Now, what is the area? Area of a rectangle is what length times what breadth what is your length 500 meters and your breadth is what 30 meters so when you multiply this one that will give you 15,000 is it 15,000 one two three okay that is 15,000 meters meters square because you are dealing with area now, to calculate, this is the area of the whole farmland. Now, they now use x meter square. So, we now want to calculate the area that is not used. So, the formula is the area of the used, the area of the used minus, oh, uh, sorry, the area of the farmland minus the area of the used will give you the area of the unused. So, the area of the unused, the area of unused, Sorry, unused. That is the area of the farmland, which is 15,000, minus the area of the used. The used here is what? X meters. That will be X. So, since it is area, that will be meters square. So, that is 15,000 minus X meters square. That is the area of the unused. Another one says, when 12 is added to 1 over 3 of a number, the result is 7 over 2 times the original number. Find the number. Okay? Now, let the number be what? Be x. Let the number be what? Be x. So, 12 is added. That will be 12 plus 1 over 3 of a number. That is of x. Then the result is what? 7 over 2 of what of x right okay so what you are going to do here is find the lcm this one is over one that will be the sm is three this is 36 plus x right equals 7x over 2 so you cross multiply and Permit me to continue from here. I'll continue up here. That will be 72, 72, sorry, that is 72 plus 2x equals 21x. And that will give you 72 over 19 equals x i think that is clear right that is 72 over 19 that is the number because when you take the collect the like terms there okay that's what you are now the next question says subtract the sum of 4x and 4y from 3 times the sum of 2x and y now if you are saying subtract from subtract 2 from 4 that is 4 minus 2. That is the meaning of that statement. Now, you will go back to the last statement. That is how to interpret this. Go back to the last statement. 3 times the sum of 2 and x. That will be 3 multiplied by the sum of 2x and y. Then you now subtract it from the sum of 4x and 4y. Do you see? If you open this bracket, this will give you 6x plus 3y minus 4x minus 4y which is 2x 
minus y. That is your answer. Clear? Now, having done justice to factorization, word problems on algebraic expressions, we now move on to what we have for today, which is simple equations. Simple equations are equations of this form. They are simple in nature. That is, it involves the unknowns. It involves a particular unknown. That is why it is called simple. It does not involve two or more unknowns. It involves only one unknown. Like, only one unknown, rather. Like, x plus 2 equals 6. So, the unknown there is x. That is what you don't know. Okay? Now, we are moving from expression to what? Equation. Note the difference. The difference between expression and equation is just the equality sign. It's just the equality sign. Expression does not have any equality sign, but an equation does. So we've moved from expression to equation. Take note. Now, to solve an equation means to find the value of the unknown that makes the equation what? True. Like if you have x plus 2 equals 6. What is that number that when you add with 2, the result will be 6? We all know it's 4. That is the meaning. Then, if an equation contains more than one term, which has the unknown quantity, we must first combine these terms in order to solve for the unknown. That one is very simple. That is, if you have like x plus 2x plus y, uh, sorry, x plus 2x plus 4 plus this, so you combine the ones that is having the same term on one side, then the one that is with, with uh, different terms on the other side, then you solve for the unknown. Okay, let's look at this example. Solve 3x plus 2 equals 23. Solve 3x plus 2 equals 23. Now, I don't, I skipped a particular uh, thing. How to solve simple equations? Yes, there are two methods to use in solving simple equations. It's either we use the balancing method or we use the, uh, the direct method which is the method of collecting of like terms so but in this case firstly we'll be using the balancing method and what how does it works it's just like your weighing balance that is you are weighing a rice and you are weighing a piece of meat 50 kg of rice then a piece of meat which one will weigh better which one will weigh more hmm? so that is what we are going to look for now how does that comes into play just from your cons from the concept of your weighing balance permit me to draw this just like a weighing pan so your equation will be in this form this will be on this side then your simple equation will be on this side which is 3x plus 2 so don't forget what we are looking for is the unknown what we are looking for is the unknown, which is x. Now, how does this balance method go? Anything you do on the left-hand side must also be applicable to what you do on the right-hand side. That is how it works. So, x must stand alone because that is what we are looking for. What do we do? We subtract 2 from both sides. So, when you subtract 2 from both sides, you will have 3x on this side. Then... You will have 21 on this side. Yes or no? Yes. Now, the next step is you divide through by 3 so that you can get your x. So, once you divide through by 3, what you'll be having will be x. That will be 21 divided by 3. That will give us what? 7. And that is your resulting answer. So, the only thing that is necessary to do here is just the drawing of this diagram, like your weighing balance, like your weighing uh, instrument that you used to weigh. Okay. Now, the next one, use the method of weighing balance, a big balancing method, to solve this for me. I will not do it. 21, then you have uh, 3x. What is your x? Do that for me now.
Okay, for those that do not know what x is, what is that number that when you multiply by by 3, the result will be 21? Or better still, divide both sides by what? By 3. And what you'll be having will be x here. Then this will be what? 7. That's all. Now, in solving the examples, we implore the balancing method of finding unknowns. We implore the balancing method of finding unknowns. We implore the balancing method of finding unknowns. Now, if the question states that use balancing method, use balancing method. But I'm thinking there's nobody that will, oh, you know, there will be a rigorous or uh, big equation that the balancing method might not be able to undo. Are you getting me now? So it only undoes stuff like this. It's so simple, like very simple equations that you can easily undo okay simple equations can either be solved directly or using balancing method approach i think i've mentioned that i've mentioned that that you can use the method of collecting of like terms now solving simple equations we solve for unknowns using the direct method which is by collecting like terms i've mentioned that so how do you solve this using the method of collecting of like terms seven y must stay alone what do you do? You add 4 to both sides. And that will give you 7y equals 28. That means y equals what? 4. Because 28 over 7 will give us what? 4. Okay? So, only if the question states that use balance method, then you can use balance. But if it is otherwise not stated, if it is not stated, use any method of your choice. But we advise that you use the direct method, which is the method of collecting of like terms. Are you getting me now? Now, let me show you something before I wrap up on this. If you're having several unknowns, no, you can't have more than one unknown, so it's just two. But if they are having different coefficients like x plus 3x minus 4 equals... 21. I'm using this one as an example. Now you collect the like terms. That is 4x equals 21 plus 4. That will be 4x equals 25. So you divide both side by 4 by 4. x equals 25 over 4. Now it's not necessarily that you get a whole number. Sometimes you might get, sometimes you might end up getting a fraction. Are you getting me? Now, this is an exercise for you. Use the balancing method to solve the following equations. X plus 5 equals 6, 51, and so on like that. So, do that and get back to me. Now, for your further readings, look at all these textbooks. Stan Mass, New General Mathematics. Then this YouTube link will be of good help for you. You will check it out. Mathematics in focus for GSS2, so this will be of good help also as well. So thank you for your time. Thank you for listening. Thank you for following through. I expect all assignments should be submitted to the email address on the first screen. Thank you very much. Take care. Bye.